What is good, guys? We're back for another episode of Powerlifting Talks, episode 8 here. Um, I just want to say sorry for the lack of upload. It's been a little bit busy. Um, but also, speaking of being sorry, um, most of my squat footage got corrupted today, and it just doesn't work. So, mainly a deadlift day here. Okay, so, on to the lifting. Something I just kind of intimated into my training, which you might be able to notice right now, is for my warm-ups, I've been trying experimenting with much fewer reps, but way slower reps. Like right here, even just with the bar, even if it's super, super light, I just really want to feel it out and get a really good control so I can just like sense what muscles are activating when, if let's say, for example, when I'm not pulling the bar close enough to myself, all these little problems I find I notice way more. Speaking of going slow, I almost want to make some kind of formula because think about it this way. Let's say you're bench pressing and let's say you did 10 reps and for each one of those reps, you had a one second descend, a one second pause and a one second concentric phase. But let's say you did five reps, but now it's two seconds for all of those. Which one of these would you think would teach you the movement better. In fact, let's make it even more extreme. Let's say it's only three reps and three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. I feel like some of you out there would probably still say the 10 reps with one second for each one of those. But honestly, what I found is slowing down my warm ups so really, really slow so I get to feel out every single little motion of the motion. For example, I want to spend a lot of time being in that position, like every position of the movement. Same thing with squats, same thing with deadlifting, same thing with bench press. So that's one main adjustment I've kind of changed with my training. Before I used to do decently more reps, but kind of fast. But I found now me just slowing everything down has helped me a ton, 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 ton more. So that's what I kind of notice here. You don't want deadlifting 225 here. Um, again, I could throw this up way faster than I am right now. And I still do a rep here and there, which is kind of fast. But even with the um, the eccentric part here, I'm still going to kind of control the way down. I think a lot of people just throw away that top, like that bottom part of the deadlift. They just let go of the bar out there to the lift. And I don't think that's right. Even here at 275, like, 275 is still pretty light for me. But I really, really just tried to slow it down here so I could really feel the hamstrings. Making sure my glutes are activating, that's one of my bigger problems. I feel like I've been lacking on the glute activation and deadlift. Even before I grab the bar here, super slowly going into my setup. Really focusing on boom, lat engagement, get down, and then look super slow. Man, it was a beautiful deadlift. Again, just really, really, really feeling it out, and I think this rep I do much faster. Yeah. Because I feel like once I do a couple slow reps, I'm like, okay, I get this motion about it. Okay, so today we will be deadlifting 345 um, for a couple. Um, another thing I'm trying to do is reduce intensity, especially with bench pressing. Um, like you'll see soon, I've had some bench press sessions where definitely reduce the intensity. I like the saying less is more, especially when it comes to powerlifting. Like the less intensity stuff you do, generally the more you can get out of it. Because specifically for powerlifting and strength training in general, Fatigue matters way more than like muscle stress, for example. For like something new I'm doing on my bench days is I, on my super light days, I'll actually add a whole nother set and I end up doing like nine sets of chest with two of those being hypertrophy sets, which I'm slowly starting to add in. But man, I'm just not that sore after because I was just doing like sets of like RP five and six, but I was getting so much more practice in with still a heavy enough weight to challenge form. Also, by the way, in that set you just saw, only reason why I have straps here is because I literally lost the grip for my fifth rep there. A little disappointed, but oh well. Um, speaking of that, this session specifically, I went a little too hard, especially on this set, which is a bit of a struggle. It wasn't all quite there. I think I reduced the weight to 335 after. Another thing, especially with deadlifting, which I got to remind myself and kind of remind other people is... It's going to be your most fatiguing lift by a long shot. I don't care what your anatomy is. Deadlift is almost always most your fatiguing lift. So you really got to think, okay, even though that set wasn't that hard, I know it fatigued me to a certain degree. So either drop a rep or two or drop the weight like I just do right here. 
go like five, ten pounds lower. Even though I dropped ten pounds here, it still felt harder than my last set, which I believe I did the same amount of reps here. So like definitely keep an eye out for how much weight you drop in between sets. There's ways you could train where you could look at it as, okay, I want all my sets to be RPE 8. And this first set was beautifully RPE 8, not so much over, not so much under. But now I'm fatigued, so do I cut out a rep? Let's say I'm doing sets of 8, do I do 7 reps? Maybe even 6 reps if it's a very fatiguing movement? Or do I drop enough weight to get to that same RB with the same amount of reps? Honestly, my opinion, I don't think it matters too much. As long as you're matching your intensity level that you want to match, I feel like you're good, you know? Like, maybe there's a more bias for rep work because, well, it's more practice, but then at the same time, it's not as heavy, so you're not challenging your form as much. So it's really like a win-lose either way. Either way you do it, you either get slightly more practice with the rep work, but slightly less weight, so it's harder. By the way, speaking of, just like my squats here, I'm going to do these very, very slow. This day was specifically a pause squat day, and I'm really disappointed that my footage got corrupted because it was it was great footage, you know? I was really, really practicing. I just feel like just in general, pausing helps so much. Like, for example, right now, or for those deadlift sets, I was pausing just off the floor, like barely lifting it, waiting till the weight kind of stopped, and then going with the rep. Because I feel like my problem is the strength off the floor, so I want to pause in the hardest part. Also, fun thing with the pause is you can definitely reduce the weight and the reps, and like the fatigue is way lower, but it's still a challenging movement. It's kind of what I was doing here. My 225 squat here. Really disappointed. I end up doing 265 for five for three sets, all kind of around RP7, six to eight, I'd say. Again, here. These are 2-2 paused, um, just because I was still warming up. But you can see, there's a little bit of a delay there. But yeah, I feel like pausing where your weakness is is always important. And some of you might think it might be a little cocky ball. Well, Reese, I don't have any weaknesses in my list. Everyone does. Everyone has some kind of weakest link there. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. Sorry for this shorter video today, guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.